Hi everyone and welcome to the shed. I'm back here again today to give you another video from our experience up in London and today is a super special video because we're not only going to share with you some amazing artworks from London and architecture we're also going to give you a glimpse of Caroline's exceptional celebration when we marked her significant birthday as she was 60 at the beginning of March and that's the purpose for our trip to London which as I said we wanted to share with all of our lovely friends on YouTube but at the same time I didn't want to be constantly taking my time out from Caroline, she taking time out from me in order to do all the talk and everything else. So we just filmed as we went, took 200 pieces of footage and then decided I'd do my best to do an edit. And thank you to everyone for all your lovely comments on the last video we put together. When of course we walked across London and visited the v and the Victorian Albert Museum. Well, today, Yes, as promised last time, we will be going to the Tate Modern. Now, as I said in the previous video, Tate Modern is just around the corner from us. So we're definitely going to be paying that a visit. But right in front of the Tate Modern, there is now a bridge that will take you from St. Paul's over the river and right to the doors of the Tate Modern. So, before we go into the Tate Modern, we're going to just take a stroll across that bridge, just halfway, just to show you the view and to give you the experience of walking on the bridge, the footbridge that was built to mark the millennium. So, let's go! So, here we are on the bridge. You see St Paul's ahead of us as we're walking now with the Tate behind us for the moment. A lot of people are jogging, feeling very vigorous. And like Carla and myself, we're just taking a stroll. Now you may notice that because of our walk in motion, there's a tendency that it appears the bridge is bouncing. Well, it's not, but it did at one point because when it first opened, so many thousands and thousands of people flocked on at one time, it set up quite a rhythm and the bridge began to bounce. But now, as you can see, the folks are here in numbers, but not vast numbers. I'm sure it's much busier during the peak seasons in the summer and when there's major events on, but we've got it pretty peaceful today. And as we look out, you can see in the distance our final destiny of the day. But here's the tower that we are going to be taking more interest in first. The tower of the old power station as we head in to see great art from around the world. And here we are in the entrance hall, this big display area. As you can see, there was that hanging structure there and then the hanging that was, hang that was made of material but we can get a closer look at that from up on the balcony. Here we go. There you see it. That is huge. And after, later in the show, we'll take you up the top. Now, before we go any further into the gallery, I must admit, we did have a small technical problem. Take a little look at this. Yes, that's right. We ended up on fast frame. For some reason, our GoPro every now and again likes to go whistling around the place. It goes on to super fast and we don't know. But the good news is whilst it fled through one or two of the exhibits, we did get to see a few more. 
and we're going to take you back now and show you those because we're going to start with something Caroline quite liked and sometimes take a fancy to win auction and that's a Singer sewing machine. Yes folks, there's a Singer sewing machine hanging on a wall. Here is a bed base hanging on a wall and here are some bells hanging on a wall. But just through this doorway, this I was impressed with. Taking all these crystals and rocks, and just simply wired them together. But I've got to be honest, and I'm sure there are a lot of rock hounds out there who will agree with me. This was something special. There are going to be things I like in this museum. There are going to be things I don't like. But that's the beauty of life. We all see beauty in different ways, but this I was impressed with. And not only that display, but the way they linked it to something close to home for us in Wales, a pile of coal and a lamp. Now here are some drawings. These were very large drawings on a wall. And here's a panel of black and white. And this, well, I'm not sure exactly what the circle was to represent but it has another circle hanging above it as you can see and then as we go around the sides it seems to be linked to construction because just out of shot was a pile of sand then there was a block of concrete then there's timber weaving all manner of things on display that obviously are intended to be linked to the circle at the center by some form Here we have a row of timber in various shapes and sizes. Then this. Now, yes, it does look a bit like an explosion in my garage, but I'm sure it took somebody many hours and has great meaning. This construction made of steps and then all the bits and pieces, quite a number of spirit levels I see. This I liked, yes. Caroline and I like this one. I thought that was such a simple idea. And here we have some of the art. This piece of art in particular, I was impressed with. Doesn't take much to impress me. It's Meccano Monster. That's right, folks. Can you see as we go around here? There's the little screw heads holding the pieces of Meccano making a collage, a Meccano collage. How good is that? Now this one, this is intriguing. This is basket work or weaving on a mega scale. It's some kind of flying animal. I'm not quite certain. They do say pigs might fly. And here we are. I'm so glad that I filmed this from the other side as we walked through because this was in the super fast footage but I quite like this this depiction based on the concept of a chessboard I just thought for a large scale installation taking up the space of a room which some of these do this work it filled the room I wasn't so sure with the circle and the construction things that was a little bit for me it didn't fill the space but this really did going right up to the ceiling and right down to the floor and now we're up at the top looking down we're looking the other way so the yellow hanging is below us and there's another hanging at the far side Fortunately, we didn't have to walk all the way up and down because there's the escalator, which I thought looked as good, if not better, than some installations. What about this, folks? This is inside an oil drum in the basement. Yet yeah, we've gone from the very roof right down to underground. And in the cellar, they still have the oil tanks that once fueled the power station that was there. And they use it for installations. Sometimes 
they don't work too well with camera because it's very dark down there. But some of them, they used lights and the lights definitely worked on camera. Well, I tell you what, we're gonna go on now and have a look around, but as we go, I'll leave you with the music. Well, I hope you're enjoying this tour of the Tate Modern so far. As I say, it's not to everyone's liking everything in there. You have to take the bits you like. For some, you may enjoy it all. You may have that concept of modern art that just lends to every piece in there and you have that understanding. For me, if it didn't speak to me, I didn't take the time to read about it. If it didn't say something, then the details on the wall would mean nothing because it would just be somebody telling me, I might as well have just read the plaques. So I walked through and took my own feeling for things. The bed springs on the wall, nah, I could take it or leave it. Along with the bits of wood and stuff with the circle. But the chair set and other things I was very impressed with. And here's the piece that impressed me the most. I am just coming in to introduce this one because I'm gonna let you see it as we saw it. I'm not gonna speak, I'm just gonna let it play. But to give you an idea of what was there, because it's quite dark, someone built an immense tower of 
radios, loudspeakers, and the such like from all over the ages, piled them right up way above where we were. And as we stood looking at it, it just kept playing sounds. Kept playing sounds. And for those who know their biblical history, it certainly reminded me of the story I heard in Sunday school of the Tower of Babel. Well, what did you think of that? I loved it. But then again, not everyone would. I didn't like the bed base hanging on a wall on a hook that much. Maybe you thought it was fantastic. That is the wonder of humanity. We all see things differently. We all appreciate things in a different way. But, of course, we can't stay at the Tate Modern all day because Caroline and I have an appointment with an afternoon tea that's pretty special and from the window of the Tate Modern we can see our destination as we're now going to make our way over to the Shard but of course we're going to share some of the things we see on the way with you too. Now we often say about the ancient and the modern side by side but use a perfect example look at this this is the ruined remains of a great hall and see how they've just incorporated it into this area here pickford's wharf and as we walk through it really worked together the old and the new still telling the story of history while moving into modern times but then as we worked our way through just past Cafe Nero here, one of the places that we discovered in London and quite enjoyed going to. But here we see a replica of a very famous ship. Can you guess what ship it is? There is a clue, folks, and the clue will come into sight quite soon because right at the front of this ship, the figurehead is a golden hind. Now as we walk around the corner, there we can see the shard. But look at that church tower. At one time that would have been so high in that part of London and now it's dwarfed by the glass shard behind it. And then we come past a pub. Yep, the mudlark. Had to put this in for all our mudlarking friends. Yeah, the mudlark was established in the 1700s, named after the people who were mudlarkers. There we go. Here it is. A very modern take on an old idea. And this ship. Well, this is no golden hind, but I've got to be honest, this is very impressive. I really like this. It's called the Navigators and it's a fountain. We're undercover. It's like an arcade. You can see the glass roof up above. You can also see all the buildings that line either side. But this metal structure is quite something to behold. See the water there running off the the wheel behind the wheel as it turns and then water shooting out through the back and there's water coming down from the top it's it's less about the amount of water and more about the way it just enhances this structure which speaks of the maritime history of the Thames which is so phenomenal And here's a ship, HMS Belfast. This has sat for a number of years now in the Thames. You can go across onto the HMS Belfast and take a look around. But as we leave the HMS Belfast just behind us, turning towards Tower Bridge on our stroll, 
we see something you don't expect to see every day in a city because right here amongst these modern buildings there is a rhino being held up by a dog and a bunny yes that's not what i thought i'd be seeing on this stroll but it has a very serious purpose to it because this artwork has been put in position and commissioned to raise awareness of animals that are going extinct and it says there are only two northern white rhinos left in the world and they're using art as we can see here we've got an elephant we've got a bunny and oh look who's reading with bunny it's our caroline now as we turn around you can see the shard there and can you see that crane up on the top of the building there's a chap in that that's not a job i would want i'd rather be down here with a rhino and a dog having a game of chess how impressive are they you can see where people have rubbed them and touched them the the pattern on them i think it's absolutely amazing i really like these sculptures and in fact it's not only Caroline that got to join in the fun with these because no I didn't get to play chess as the pieces wouldn't move but I did get to ride on a bike now it's not a tandem I don't know what you'd call a bike with this many characters on board but there I am between a bunny and a gorilla with a hippo and an elephant on the back and here folks is Borough Market this has been serving food for a thousand years and it's amazing the noise the sound the the sense of all the wonderful produce around you fresh foods and one of the things they do a lot of is preserves and cheese oh boy they like their cheese in borough market there were numerous cheese stalls like this all as impressive one of the other but uh, we were on our way we really couldn't be stopping for food today even though it's not just fresh produce you can take but they also serve hot food here there's the sign hot food this way so although we followed the sign to have a look and what we found did not disappoint if we had smelly vision now i'm sure the smells as well as the sounds as well as the colors would really tempt you in but of course we're just having a little look showing you around we will be back but not today for us eating at these wonderful places because we've got an appointment elsewhere up at the shard which isn't very far away in fact that's how close it is folks there's the shard and there's the butter market and that's our next stop Chicken is a path of grapefruit, carrot and caraway seeds. You've got roast beef, you've got horseradish, you've got carnage and chicken and you've got egg truffle made of it. Mango passion fruit, orange blossom and jasmine tea. Uh, lavender, manuka honey and lemon. And then we have the uh, dolce chocolate with blocks. Are you ready for... I'm dead. Happy birthday to you. Well, wasn't that a posh, posh tea? And what a nice gentleman, and so good of him to wish Caroline a happy birthday. 
as he made the magic smoke appear from underneath the chocolate shard, just to make it extra special. But if you're wondering what our view was like from the shard, here's a chance to see it for yourself. Yes, this is our view, looking down from the table where I was sat, like a brilliant, giant train set as all the trains flow in and out of London to London Bridge Station and the view across right over the city we're on the 35th floor and we're higher than the tower next door well that's it from our London trip for this time but I'm sure I've got enough footage to do another video yet and I'll put that together as long as you're enjoying them. If you are, then please let us know by giving us a thumbs up or leave a comment. And of course, as always, why not share it with your friends? Because the more the merrier when we're out and about. But most importantly, till the next time that we're all out together, don't forget, have fun. Bye.